Chris BBI here. I want to stop and say thanks. Thanks for tuning in and checking out whatever the video is about that's about ready to come up next. If you could take a minute and hit subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you enjoy what you've seen here, make sure to hit the like button. We'd greatly appreciate your support. Anyhow, guys, all that aside, let's get on with the show. Well, we have seen the sample of fire before. I had this nice gentleman by the name of uh, Mr. J. He called me out and he's got a whole bunch of ham gear. But he bought this thing off eBay. And somebody sold it to him underneath the impression that, uh, or underneath the, uh, the auspices that I had worked on it. And this is true. I have been in this little guy once. We can tell this, not because there's a sticker on it or anything, because of the Stinger oxygen free cable that's on this. Now, one of the things I got to call attention to is this connector. These do not and will not and cannot carry enough current to run this little box. So, just saying we might want to go up and go to like, I don't know, a 75 amp Anderson connector or something maybe? But the reason it's here is because he said he run it a couple times, it got really super hot and then it quit. So let's get down in here and let's take a quick look for on the inside of this thing. Burnt 10 ohm, burnt 10 ohm, burnt 10 ohm, burnt 10 ohm. So that means all of these uh, SD1446 transistors that are in here are done. So this is a straight four pill. Now we're going to go through the process of checking this thing out. Um, I have been in here, I've modified the input circuit a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to put HGs back in the spots. It's a lot cheaper than these 1446 transistors and we might be able to scooch a little more watts out of this thing. Just a little bit. Now, you guys know I'm not a big fan of these little guys. They're uh, not the best thing in the room. Man, that freaking LED is snapped clean off. Should probably change that too why it's here. Make it perfect for the guy. So, we're going to pull the transistors out. We're going to check our bias voltages and make sure that in the process of this thing getting super hot that it didn't wipe out the, uh, the bias circuit that's over here. So double check that. We'll slap some HGs in it and we'll see what happens after that. So, give me a minute. Let's pull some pills. Um, pardon me, transistors. Pull the transistors out. And, um, we'll remove the smoked up 10 ohms and we'll see where we can go from there. Just give me just a second. Okie dokie. Check it out. Okay, so we fixed the LED on the front real quick. Now what we're doing is the proper way to set this thing up is actually you're going to use an amp clamp ring and we're going to measure our amperage, but a quick down low dirty way of checking this is we're going to measure our voltage. So what I'm looking here, now that's going to drop a little bit once we actually put the component in there. It's going to drop down to about 4, 4.9 or lower, but that's what I wanted to see. Because sometimes these transistors that are down in here, when they get hot, they'll run away. This will open up to 12 volts, and that'll kill your transistors. That's what I wanted to test. So we know that's good. Now, even though these two circuits are piggybacked on each other, we're going to double check it. Because I don't know about you, I'm not in the mood to buy anybody free transistors. Okay. So we are in like sin. On that note, let's put some transistors in it. It does a smidge more than 450 watts now. Okay, so turn that off and turn this on. We have gone in and changed a couple little parts. We went and put four brand new transistors in there and then we changed the output um, swamping capacitors across the top of the transformers. And this is what we got. So, 1000 watt slug and peak, 1000 watt slug and average, 5 watt slug and reverse, back from the bird, 10,000 watt dummy load. 2950, we're going to jump over here and use the 955 in a minute. 2950, a little 5-watt slug uh, between the 2950 and a 4-pill. 
So, we're gonna start out in the off position. A whole whopping 20 watts of drive. We're gonna go into low mode. A Hold on to your undies, that was 150 whole watts. I'll go to medium mode. A 400 watts. And then high. High has no attenuator on the input whatsoever. I'm going to show you why in just a minute. Okay, so about 450, 500 watts. That's with 20 whole watts of drive. Now the guy that owns this box has got like a 35 or 45 watt radio. Okay, now what I'm going to tell you, Mr. Mr. L, is you're going to run this in the high position. And where I want you to see, where I want to see you key it, it's right about there. See that? It's about 75 watts. You key this thing at 75 watts, it's going to last you a lifetime. Now let's come over here and let's look at our voltmeter. And we're doing all these tests. At 14 volts. So we just pulled 50 amps of load across our power supply. So 17 watts of output or 75 watts of output power. Let's go ahead and shut this down. Is about a three and a half watt dead carrier, two and a half watt carrier going in. We'll get you 75 out. Okay. And we have to keep that in mind because the conversation I had with Mr. L earlier this afternoon, he was a little bit confused about how he wanted to go about setting it up. Now, the other thing is he's been running this thing down at like 12.8 or 13 volts. And what I told him to do was take that power supply and turn it up, go up to about 14.5, and he'll be safe. And everything's going to be way happier because the parts aren't going to be starving as bad for current. And the other thing I was explaining to you, Mr. L, was that <clears throat> this clip doesn't do you any favors. Okay, but I'm going to leave this in line. And I strongly suggest that you go to Anderson Clips. That'll help you save a bunch of amperage. But for every one of these weak connections like this and this, by the time the amperage moves all the way through the cable and then comes down here to the board and then moves around, if we're feeding this 14 volts, by the time it gets down to the component, the component's seeing like 13.2. So if we have the power supply at 13.8 or 13.5, the parts are actually running at like 12 volts. Yes, that's what they're rated for, but they run really, really hot there. They'll run cooler if you come up to about 14 volts and bring that, that voltage floor from 12 to about 13.8. Okay, now the reason I wanted to show you this here, hold on, I gotta do one more test. Let's see here. Turn the amp on. Input tune, low. Medium. High. Okay. Good flat input tune. Nice output power running just the way it should with only 20 watts of drive. You're going to see a little bit more power out of it than me because you're going to be able to hit it just a little bit harder with your 35 40 watt radio. Okay. We're going to drive this a little bit harder. And the reason I took the pad out on the high position is because I want you to be able to enjoy the full effect of this thing. Amplifier on in high mode, amplifier off. Okay. Nice and low, talking through the amp. Turn the amp back on. Two hundred bird. 600 watts peak. And that's an AM, so it's pulling 62 amps worth of draw in AM. Now, Mr. L, like I was explaining to you on the phone, bud, this will pull more current when you operate it in sideband. So that 75 amp power supply might not be enough to carry this. But if you got all your other ham gear off and this is the only thing that's on, you'll be good to go. So, let's see. Oh yeah, one last thing. You were saying this thing gets crazy hot to the touch. As 
73 degrees. And we are at room temperature 79. Ice cold. Now, I can't guarantee it's going to stay that way unless we do one other thing. Give me just a second. Oh yeah, I put a fan on it. That's what I did to fix the problem. So, if we get down in here, if we look down in here, you'll see that there's a gab. It's right, make sure I'm on the right freaking fin. There it is. There's a gob. Remember, bigger the gob, better the job. So down in there's some thermal heat sink compound. And that's attached to a thin piece of copper. Okay? Thin piece of copper is making contact on the heat sink. It's making contact on the heat sink in a very specific place. That fin, if we look down in here, see now I got a little fan blade noise. That copper makes contact with the fin that's in direct in line with the transistors. So that'll be the hottest point on the whole amplifier at any time, okay? That heat travels up that little copper leg and it comes over to a thyristor or a thermocouple, depending on... I think that that's a thyristor capacitor. Anyhow, so what that does is, is the amp heats up the fan speed on this thing's going to increase. So let's turn the fan on and you'll turn it down here so you can expose the, the microphone to it. It's moving little to no air, nice and quiet. Because remember, we spend most of our time in the receive mode. So this will get the amp nice and cool. Let's heat the amp up a little bit. Now it goes into turbo drive mode when it gets too hot. And when it cools itself down, it goes back into quiet running again. This is controlled by the power switch. The fan's always on. Well, brother, I think this is going to fix your problems. Honestly, most of them. I think the thing's all back up and running. Oh. more duds for the pile. Gentlemen, my name is BBI. Without a shadow of a doubt, I am the biggest mud duck in Idaho. This is a fact at the moment. Pretty sure somebody's going to come along someday and make that not a fact, which I'm comfortable with that at this point. I get to build cool stuff like this, and I get to work with other people's stuff all the time, and I'm totally grateful for it. Honestly, I don't get to be here without all of you guys sending me projects like this and then being patient enough to let me get around to where I can work on them. I've had a bunch of stuff going on over here, a bunch of big projects in the background I can't tell anybody about, but they're coming up. It's going to involve milling heat sinks and all kinds of crazy stuff, stuff that you guys have never seen before, or maybe if you've seen, ain't nobody brought it back in a long, long time. We got some fun stuff coming out soon. Like I said, if you got a problem, call this number right here. I might not be able to answer the phone right away, but I will call you back before the end of the business day every single day. Mr. L, listen, this thing is right. It's got good parts in it. It's got a good fan on it. I honestly don't think you're going to have any more trouble with it, especially after the conversation we had on the phone today. I appreciate you sending this thing up. I appreciate you taking the time and letting me work on it. On that note, I'm going to take it in the house. My wife is going to turn around and send it to you. Gentlemen, i got to go. i got other things I need to do this evening. And the night is young. It's only 1230 at night. I'll see you guys. Bump, bump.